Okay, a little bit late to the party, but let's talk takeover. West Ham takeover, or at least West Ham investment, certainly. So the rumour is that Daniel Kretinsky. I don't actually, I, I don't want to split it up. Daniel Kretinsky. I, you should probably do both. Daniel Kretinsky or Daniel Kretinsky. We'll go with Daniel Kretinsky. He sounds ominous, sounds like a Bond villain. I like it already. Okay, so... Czech billionaire Daniel Gretinsky looks like he's going to buy 27% of West Ham. Let's leave it there for the moment. I don't mean end the video, but let's leave it there. Let's not extrapolate further forwards and work out whether he's going to take ownership of the club. There's enough information there to chew the fat on and really try and decide what the hell's going on. Okay, so my first question is, I've got two main questions. My first question is, um, who shares he taking? And my second question is, are there going to be funds available for for January? In particular, January. Now, I we don't know. We're not going to get an answer to this. So I'm going to try and guess on this. And the first thing is the shares. Whose shares is he getting? I'd imagine he's getting a little bit of David Gold shares. I wouldn't be surprised if he's getting Terence Brown shares. Um, and I certainly wouldn't be at all surprised if Trip Smith has some shares, if his shares were involved in that as well. Um, I'll just explain all of them very, very quickly. I don't think there's any benefit to having Terence Brown um, involved in the club. What the club needs is um, young investors who, when I say investors, I don't mean stakeholders. Terence Brown's a stakeholder. Um, what we want is somebody that's going to be able to plough some money in, which is going to allow us to be a little bit more productive in the transfer window, to build on what we've done so far. Uh, I, I think there's... You can understand it. There's a stagnation to, to Terence Brown being there, certainly, at the moment. You know, he's been Clearly, he's a West Ham fan. I mean, whether you like him or loathe him, and lots of people do loathe him. But I do think there's there's probably time for someone a bit more vibrant to come in. And um, and Daniel... I've done it again, haven't I? Hold on. I'm so sorry. Kretinsky. <laughs> I can't believe that. I'm not starting a video again anyway. There you go. Um, Daniel, let's call him Daniel for, for um, uh, just to smooth the passage for the remainder of this video. Um, he certainly is going to be somebody who's more vibrant. He's going to be hands on and he's going to look to push things forward. Uh, certainly. And he's and he's young. Well, he's 47. All the best people are. But he's young enough that he's got um, enough years ahead of him. And he's, he's an active businessman. So on and so forth. Um, to Trip Smith. Well, I think that's slightly different, the Trip Smith shares, because I just believe that... I think Trip Smith always bought those shares so he could help broker a takeover from some American investors. That never happened. You can absolutely understand why. There's been a global recession. It didn't happen. Wouldn't be surprised if he gets his shares. Um, gold, will gold ever sell up completely? Possibly not. Um, but maybe take some of his shares, dilute his shareholding. Uh, in some way, shape or form. And you can do something. Look, Gold loves being involved with West Ham. He loves going to the games. Uh, clearly, you know, is, has been a fan. You can make him something like life president and he still goes to all the games and does all that sort of thing. Dilutes his shareholding ever so slightly. I'm guessing. I'm absolutely guessing. But I, I think Sullivan is not um, is not watering down his shareholding. That's for sure. Um, so... Gio alluded to it in his video yesterday that this information had come our way and we'd shared it with the patrons. Um, I think it might have been a couple of months ago, something like that. Uh, that, that much is true, but it's, it's not just because of that. This has a feeling of, of something that has a little bit more validity to it, a little bit more weight to it. If you remember when um, PAI Capital came in, I, I had a number of questions, 10 questions. I've only got two now. Um, our times have changed. And one of them was, are you going to be borrowing the money? And the reason I asked that question was purely because it was quite clear when you scratch below the surface that I'm not going to say that they didn't have tuppence to rub together. In fact, you'd need two tuppences, wouldn't you, if you're going to rub them together? you need fourpence. Unless it was two pennies. Whatever, it doesn't matter. They didn't seem to have an awful lot of money that would enable them to take over a football club and run it in the wealthy way we want it to be run. OK? So I thought, OK, well, where's the money coming from? It's either coming from investment or it's coming from borrowing. Either one ain't great because investors want a return. Borrowing, well, you're borrowing it. You're borrowing it from the banks. They want a return too. Um, I asked the question because it wasn't, it wasn't evident that they were completely minted. Um, anyway, so 
this one's slightly different. This guy has Daniel. He has clearly has personal wealth. So I'm not even asking the question, where's the money coming from? I can see where the money's coming from. Uh, he is a, a serial investor. I don't mean, by the way, he's, he's like buying shares in, in Kellogg's and you know Frosties and Weetabix and things like that. When I, what I mean by a serial investor is, is he invests in an awful lot of companies. Um, he's very good. He's, he's a wealthy man. He's very good at making money. Um, but he's clearly looking to, to get involved with West Ham. We, we know this anyway. Um, I also think it's the right time to buy West Ham as well. Or invest in West Ham, should I say. Because... Look at where we are. I haven't got to sell the concept. You know what you know what we're doing in the league. You know how we're doing in everything else. We're doing really, really well. We've got um, some stability now. We've got a good manager. We're building the infrastructure of the club. And now is a really good time to push on. A really good time to push on. And you look at the clubs around West Ham, you can't buy them. And I, I really mean it. You cannot buy them. You're not buying Chelsea. You're not buying Man City. You know this. You're certainly not going to buy it. Manchester United... Um, look, if if a guy worth about twenty billion, of Usmanov um, was worth about twenty two billion, worth twenty two billion, he couldn't buy Arsenal off Cronky, so nobody else is going to be able to. And even the guy that owns Spotify tried to buy it. Cronky ain't selling. That much is clear. It's quite evident that Leicester are not going to sell. Um, Tottenham, well, that's Joe Lewis, isn't it? Enoch. Not selling. I mean, you could just go through it. Aston Villa not selling. Everton not selling. They're already owned by rich people. They don't want to sell. There's not that many clubs you can come in and invest in. Particularly not many clubs who are doing as well as West Ham. Doing flying in Europe and doing, obviously, remarkably well in, in, the, uh, in the League Cup and, of course, the Premier League. So the point is, if anybody's coming in with this level of money, what's he going to look to do? Well, I'll tell you what he's going to look to do. He's going to look to invest. Which... Brings in the question, how much of this 170-odd million that he's going to look to plough into the club, how much of that is going to go into the team? Now, I don't think an awful lot. Look, the club have some debt, and some of that money's going to go to pay off the debt. Some of that money's going to have to go to buy out some of the shares of people that are there. Absolutely. Um, if some of it is with Sullivan's, then obviously I do think that will go back into the club. But if all that's happening is he's buying out Trip Smith, he's buying out Golden, he's buying out... Um, Terence Brown, well, that's where that money is going. Is it necessarily going to be an injection into the club? No, that won't. But I do think there will be some injection into the club. And it doesn't have to be a lot at this point. Because what you're not going to do is buy into a club, particularly if you are young and um, and enterprising and entrepreneurial, uh, like like Daniel clearly is, if you're going to do, if you're going to buy into a club, you're not going to want it to wither on the vine. You're going to want to push on. And I tell you what, as a platform to push on from, this is it. I did a video a couple of days ago, how much better can West Ham get? Remember? You better remember. It's only a couple of days ago. Otherwise, your, your memory's worse than mine. What could we do to push forward? And I, and I, I went through the, the team, the squad, uh, position by position. And actually, I think a relatively small investment really does help West Ham because I think if we can get to January and we can plough a bit of money in, then I think we can do really, really well. Look, the natural inclination, bearing in mind he is, he already owns some of Sparta Prague. I understand what people are going to say. The, the natural link is Adam Plosek. We'll get Adam Plosek in. Well, um, I like him, and I've wanted him for some time. And I hope we do, only if David Moyes wants him. What I don't want, is a player forced on David Moyes. So if David Moyes already identified Losek as as the one, like Neo again, um, then by all means bring him in. But more importantly than that, I just wonder if in this takeover, and we get it done now, and we get it done before Christmas, before New Year, more pertinently, if that money comes in and actually he's got 40 to 50 million to spend in January, I think it's game on. I really do. Because actually, you look, you look at what he's spent. By and large, it's been excellent. You look at Zuma, you look at Suchek, you look at Bowen, you look at Ben Rama. Money very, very well spent. OK, look, I take it. Vlasic has taken a little while to acclimatise. But even more reason, even more reason. I just look at it and think, do you know what? If we got a 50 million and we were able to spend it, <laughs> I say able to spend it, it would be really terrible having 50 million and not being able to spend it. That would be worse than, than having no money, actually. Um... 
what's David Moyes going to do? I don't want to go into that. I went into it the other day. Um, but if it did enable us to go and buy a striker in January and one other position, back up left back, I don't know. Um, probably don't know. Well, whatever. it doesn't matter what position you think we need or whether we don't think we need. But let's just, let's just say... That bearing in mind Ben Rama's going away, African Cup of Nations, bearing in mind that Vlasic hasn't quite settled yet, I would suggest an attacking type midfielder who can play in, a, in a two or three positions. Um, Jesse Lingard, anyone, by the way. Man United will probably have their new manager by then anyway. Um, I, I do wonder if we're going to be given the funds that we could bring someone like Lingard in and bring a striker in for £25 million. I, I mean, that would, that would immediately improve the squads. Let's be fair, it was a little bit... Been a little bit lacking up front, haven't we, in the last two or three games. Um, and we've done remarkable. It doesn't matter. We win anyway. Striker, no striker, doesn't matter. But I do think we'd be all the better for it. Um, as an overview, as a, my gut instinct and my gut feeling about this, that this feels real. And I'm not, as you know me, I'm not shy to say when I think it's going to be a load of rubbish. My, my very first video... Pike Abbott was, I don't think this is going to happen. So it's not like I'm, I, I automatically just think everything's not going to happen. Far from it. This seems more likely. We're a long way down the road here before this story has got leaked. The source of the story is good as well. Weeks into negotiations and the story gets leaked, that you understand. Um, big stories getting leaked before another bid has gone in. Um... I don't think so. As I understand it as well, proof of funds are um, proof of funds have, have been basically the approach. Let me just phrase this correctly. the The approach of interest in West Ham has been done in the way that you would expect, not the way it was done previously. So the whole thing has a sort of official, authentic vibe. What's that? Um, that fly again? It keeps coming back. It's haunting me. The ghost of ghost of fly. That's what it is. Um, it has an authentic vibe about it, really, doesn't it? I, I, I really, I'm really interested, and I don't mind this at all, cause, because because I, I get the people do say to me, "Oh, you're anti takeover." I, I get it. I, you know, I had, had a pop at a lot of clubs that got taken over, and and um, you know, when West Ham looks like West Ham are going to be taken over, I have another pop at that. Uh, look, if you go back far enough and you go and look on the look on the old forums, you'll find me when Golden Sullivan taking you know, over. I'm having a pop at that too. So, I am naturally suspicious because I do worry about people's motivations it's it's my club it's you know I, I love it like every West Ham fan does and I, I want it to be nurtured and I want it to be treated well and but now now I, I find it more believable now I get it now I can look at West Ham and think okay I can see why we're attractive I can also see if this has been going on weeks why David Sullivan was so keen to, to back this away because a lot of these people that do this, they're in for the ride, okay? Well, whether you like or you dislike Sullivan, Sullivan enjoys going to the games. He's going to be, he's been loving it at the moment, what's going on. He wants more of the same. If he can't afford it, but he can bring someone else in without diluting his shares, but this other person comes in and gets another couple of players for the first team, he's going to love that. He's absolutely going to love it. And when the guy, I've got to read his surname again, hold on a second. Kretinsky, Kretinsky, when Kretinsky comes in, I don't know why I had to carry it, oh my goodness, what a twat, anyway, um, when Kretinsky comes in, he's going to drive it forward, he is absolutely going to want to, um, we'll, we'll, we'll get, West Ham we called a mini Czech Republic, I get it, I don't actually mind, I, I've got to say, there are a lot of, um, be careful what I say here, there are a lot of investors who uh, who I wouldn't want taking over West Ham, let's put it that way. Um, and, and I think I've listed a lot of them for various different reasons. This one I, I don't have a problem with. He seems to be clean as a whistle. Um, I really like all the business we've done um, with the Czech clubs. I know it's Slavia Prague, maybe not Sparta Prague. Um, we clearly got a good relationship. The Czech ambassador loves West Ham. This is just more of the same. I don't mind us being associated with that. I think it's helpful. I think it's healthy. And I think when you bring those players over, it, it assists them in settling. I don't mind it being... The East London club with a little, a little sort of, um, a, little, a little bit of Czech Republic there as well. I don't mind that at all. So I, I actually welcome this. Um, I actually hope it goes through uh, because I do think, I, I just, I don't think someone's coming in to bleed the club dry, and that's all I've ever asked. Don't bleed the club dry. Drive us forward a little bit. And when I look at this, this, this just feels right. This feels right. 
I think it's going to happen. I hope it's going to happen. And I think when it does, it will be good news for West Ham. You almost wondered the other day when I did the video, how much better can it get? Almost the only way is down. Support this manager. We This is a... I've waited all my life for a time like this, I think, really, when we had a manager who was as good as this, who could then be supported. Um, Funny enough, go back to the Terence Brown days. It really looked like Harry Redknapp was building something when, up to the point where Rio got sold to Leeds. Uh, we don't need me to tell you. It built a good club with some really good young young players who all went on to win Premier Leagues and Champions Leagues. You don't need me to list all those all those players that played alongside Rio. But also there were some really good uh, senior players in there as well. Um, who, Moyes, um, who Redknapp had brought in, obviously people like Decanio, but you know pe people like Pierce as well. Fun enough, uh, who he'd brought in, and and Trevor Sinclair. He was he was good, and there was a real opportunity then to invest and push forward. And we could have gone on to the next level. We really could have done. We didn't. We sold Rio Ferdinand, and it all. <laughs> we bought Titi Kamara and Riga Bear Song. Anyway, anyway, that that's that's neither here nor there. I guess there's another opportunity now. This is the opportunity for us to push forwards. Um, I think we we want it to happen. And I, I think David Moyes wants it to happen. I don't feel with this guy coming in. I'm not going to read his name again. Daniel coming in. I can't, I can't remember it. I'm not going to try. If I try, I'm going to get it wrong. I'm not going to. Um, I, I don't feel Moyes' position is under threat if he comes in, uh, which I think is really, really important. He needs to feel um, secure. And I, I, I'm, I really like it. I'm very, very happy at this news. Uh, it's, it's come at a good time. It, it's come at a really, really good time. Uh, long may it continue. I did think January was a good time for us to invest. Invest when you're strong. You know what? Honestly, if you can do that, um, yeah, exciting.